Hey guys, before the video begins, I would like to make a very important announcement in regards to a new channel made by a friend of mine, Kelly Productions. He has created a new channel named The Watch. It's a channel dedicated to making superhero films and miniseries of a new universe that has been created and named The Watch. And the first film is out right now. If you follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or even on this very channel, you know I've spoken about a film that's been involved that I've been involved with. Well, this is it. The Midnight Warden. I'd highly appreciate it if you guys subscribed to this channel, liked the video, turned on notifications, and shared this film with your friends so we can make more films in the future. The more awareness of our films, the more we can make. You can find a link to the channel in the description below of this video, or click on my channel and go to the section channels, and it will be there as we speak. And with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoy today's video. What's going on, everybody? My name is El Prince, and welcome back to yet another reaction video. And today, I got another SCP video for you guys. This is SCP-3935, The Thing A Quiet Madness Made. No idea what this SCP is going to be about, because I keep saying this on all my SCP reaction videos, but I just like to say it to ensure that everybody knows that I'm not faking reactions when it comes to SCPs. I find SCP videos that I know that are about the SCPs from the actual Wikipedia, but I know I've never read or heard of them up until, well, watching this video. So we're going to go ahead and click this play on this bad boys by SCP explained stories and animation. So we're going to go ahead and click play on this bad boy in three, two, one. Go. Salvation, Indiana was your typical Midwestern American town. The kind of place where everyone, Give me some strangeness. Was there, where everyone was comfortable leaving their doors unlocked at night, where there was a sense of trust between neighbors that you couldn't find in a more populated area. The kind of place where word traveled fast, and where people talked about things that were improper in hushed voices behind the backs of others. <laughs> in Salvation, being an outsider or deviating from the norm was akin to complete isolation. You either fit in, or you got out. And if you didn't, Salvation had its ways of making you conform to the mold. Gossip, organized stalking efforts, discrimination. These small town methods were often employed by the town's inner circle to keep those who they had a distaste for in check. And unfortunately, this cliquish mentality can be the norm when it comes to small towns. There's wow. nothing anomalous about the ugliness of human nature. But Salvation did have its secrets. The kind that, if brought to light, would tear a small Hello, town Robert. apart. The kind that attracted the attention of the U.S. government's Unusual Incidents Unit, a branch of the Federal Bureau of Investigation that dealt with the paranormal and supernatural, the U.S. government's answer to the SCP Foundation. Between huh. June 18th and June 23rd, 1976, the town of Salvation, Indiana, underwent swaths of extreme anomalous activity that affected the town's entire population, but was mainly centered around Salvation's High School, appropriately named, well, Salvation, Salvation High, High School. School. Two UIU agents were dispatched to Salvation to assess the reports of anomalous activity, record it, and of course, help cover it up. This was one of the few times the UIU got the jump on an anomalous incident before a larger, more prominent organization, such as the SCP Foundation or the Global Occult Coalition, Bet they got a company pizza party for that one. <laughs> the operation went smoothly, with the agents using an early amnestic labeled Chemical 110 to wipe the memories of the townsfolk after interviewing them. Although in later years, study of Chemical 110 would prove it to be incredibly dangerous, as the oh. amnestic was both toxic and had a degrading, damaging effect on human memory centers. Between this and the Foundation's early amnestic models also proving to be incredibly dangerous, the 1970s were an interesting time indeed in the field of supernatural cover-up operations. Mm. The timeline of events the agents established depicted an eerie scene. It was only a few days, but what occurred was both horrifying and strange. On Sunday in a night, hospital. 10th grade Not a hospital, a high school. high school reported hearing what they described as someone trying to speak under the ground while passing by the school on their way home from a church service. Is said building haunted? One student reported it to her mother, who ignored it entirely. On Monday, an 11th grade student of Salvation High School claimed during gym class 
that he could hear voices coming from underneath the school's pool. Several other students corroborated this story. When school officials came to investigate, they didn't find anything unusual. But the UIU agents found that the lining of the bottom of the pool was cracked. On the same day, several female students reported seeing faceless things instead of their own reflections in a bathroom mirror. They did not seem bothered by this. During lunch announcements, hmm. many... Well, that just reminds me of the uh, photo shoot, shoot uh, photo booth SCP I saw a while back by Dr. Bob. Students described being able to hear a third voice alongside the two other students speaking unintelligibly below the broadcast. Curiously, the agents found that the PA room, where the broadcast originated from, sat in a media center near the pool. On Tuesday, students arriving at school noticed that the Indiana State flag was more than three meters above the top of the flagpole, attached to nothing, just floating. The American flag was not found. And more importantly, the students claimed they could see nine female figures hanging by ropes from the flagpole, who disappeared immediately after being seen. During a biology class, huh. one student suddenly stood up and rolled their eyes to the back of their head. They descended suddenly into the floor and disappeared entirely. Shortly after, they reappeared above a ceiling panel in the center of the room. No other students were able to identify the student, and several of their classmates insisted that their actions were just a joke. The UIU agents were unable Okay, that's very creepy. That actually took me for a second there. To have one's eyes roll up in the back of their head and just fall off and just appear on the wall. That actually just creeped me out a little. Unable to find proof of the student's existence in Salvation's enrollment records. Similarly, students described yet another student they didn't recognize walking the halls of the high school. They were unable to define any details of their appearance, save for one thing that stood out. They wore a purple satchel with the word syncope embroidered on the side. A custodian reported seeing something staring at him, standing at the bottom of the school pool. On Wednesday, the horror only sped up, as school staff noted that there was a full two inches of water across all levels of the school. For whatever reason, the school's principal decided not to close the school. At 7.56 a.m., the entirety of the student body heard an unknown voice whisper the word, hello, in their right ear. Members of the school band realized their instruments no longer produced any sound, but whenever they played, they reported seeing a small, black, human-shaped entity flickering in and out of view in the corner of the room, facing the wall. One student saw a dark figure walk The school is haunted, confirmed. ...walking up and away from the school through the air at an impossible angle. Eventually, the figure disappeared from her sight and was never seen again. No other student addressed this. On Thursday, a student in gym class avoided a dodgeball as it phased through his body. He sunk into the floor, screaming for help. Nobody who noticed seemed motivated enough to help him. The entire school shifted roughly one foot off of its foundations at 11 a.m. The vice principal, who was sent to inspect the building's integrity, described seeing something small with too many faces grinning at him from underneath the building before the school inexplicably resettled back to its original position. The boys' locker rooms disappeared and were replaced with what witnesses described as something, something that, that screamed. screamed. They were unable to provide. All right, this whole building is literally the SCP. I thought it was just going to be like a girl that was like living inside the building that would be an SCP. Thanks by the um, by the thumbnail, but apparently that's not the case. It's the whole building that's being anomalous, or it's like also it seems to like be connected to like. Several reality warpers, it seems. Details. As students left for the day, they saw nine young women hanging in the air, tilted forward at an angle above the school's parking lot. They could be silently mouthing words, and their appearances were described by witnesses as ugly and unremarkable. They vanished, and again the majority of the town residents reported hearing a child's voice say the word hello below them upon the figure's disappearance. A panic ensued, as town officials had no explanation for these events. Salvation's principal made the call to close the school on Friday. However, when Friday morning arrived, the entire student body showed up for school. The building was locked, so the students simply waited outside to be let in. No individuals could describe why they were there. There was a knock on a window, and the students saw a small black entity oh, standing outside the second-story classroom. 
an entity phased in and out of the school's windows over and over, until suddenly disappearing. After this, the front door unlocked itself, and the mass gathering of students entered the building. Wait, why are they going However, in the building? What they found was unlike the small school they had come to know over the years. Inside, Salvation High School was transformed into a non-Euclidean space, meaning non that reality didn't work inside it the way it should. Hallways that led right instead led downward. Stairs that went up instead curved left. As the students moved through the school, they couldn't help but feel like they were always moving down, lower and lower. Some heard whispers, others heard drums in the distance. As they approached the basement, they saw a massive stone. Wait, I know, I saw that. Drums in the distance. Apartment of anom abnormalities. <laughs> There's a sign right there. As they approached the basement, they saw a massive stone archway. Suddenly, the students shifted, encasing the entire group in rock and earth for 20 seconds. After this brief suffocating torture ended, the students reappeared back in the school, except this time, every one of them reported being the only one in the building. They described the experience wandering the building alone before coming to what they called a doorway below a doorway, and ended up inside a small sub-basement room. There they saw three mysterious visions. A woman crouched over a body of water, surrounded and covered in blood. A farmhouse and a group of trees that were burning. Nine white humanoid figures floating in the air overhead. A weeping woman digging in a field until her hands began to rot and fall apart. When these visions subsided, the black entity reappeared again. It whispered hello, and the group of students were suddenly surrounded by nine screaming female figures. After this, the students reappeared inside their own homes. It was at this point that the UIU began to enter the town to distribute amnestics to the subjects. More anomalous activity was recorded in rapid succession. Bodies wow. hanging in the sky. Water so it's not just the high school at this point. It appears to be the entire town. It's leaking human hair and mucus instead of water. Individuals reported that their facial features had disappeared entirely. Others reported seeing faceless creatures in the town. The black entity frantically appearing and reappearing in rapid succession throughout the town. Even a weeping young woman running back into the school's building, who witnesses lost after she entered the school's basement. The cover-up effort was brutal, but it worked. The townspeople of Salvation were convinced that they saw hallucinations as a result of toxic gases blown south from a factory up north. But what was the connection between all the phenomena? Nine. Well, there's three different continuous things that appears to pop up. The nine women and the black shadowy figure of a woman. Faceless female entities. Water and blood. Something that literally upsets the entire foundation of Salvation High School. A small black entity. Adults in the town ignoring the things their children saw and acting indifferent toward them. All this sounds a lot like a dirty, dark secret being unearthed in the town of Salvation. Something people would rather turn a blind eye to and ignore, but they couldn't, because the terror was only getting started. A week after these events occurred, contractors assessing the damage to the school discovered the sub-basement room, where the students had various visions of anomalous entities. Behind it was the entrance that led to the large stone archway. This antechamber was discovered after one of the members of the contracting team slipped and fell beneath a collapsed section of wall and floor. Oh that led to the massive area underneath the school. The contracting team attempted to extract them, but they did not succeed. Their disappearance caught the attention of the SCP Foundation, who assessed the school and deemed the area beneath the school to be anomalous, as the building's architecture should not be able to accommodate the size of the area. It was designated SCP-3935. So it was right, it wasn't just a school, it's like almost the entirety of the town, but like, the subterranean part of it. And as the Foundation began investigating it, they were determined to uncover the truth of what really was occurring in Salvation, Indiana. While exploring SCP-3935, they came across the Stone Archway, a piece of architecture whose origins are unknown. Inscribed on the arch was a phrase that read, The way below winds deeper, longer, unspeakable its patterns laid. The lost forever, damned to wander. This thing, a quiet madness made. After the initial quiet establishment madness of SCP made the title of the video. 35 as an anomalous location, the Foundation poured deeper into Salvation's mystery 
and came across the documents created by the UIU agents. The Foundation, being much more thorough in their containment methods than the UIU, decided that the small town of 1,400 people was easy <laughs> enough to relocate entirely, and the entire area could be condemned, feeding into the excuse of a hazardous waste facility nearby, leaking noxious gases into the town's water and air supply. With the townsfolk successfully relocated, there we go. was quarantined and cut off from the rest of the world. Roads were removed and rerouted, and Foundation personnel turned over any trespassers to local authorities. Salvation High School became a hub for Foundation researchers studying SCP- Well, it appears that the high school is the biggest connection towards the uh, subterranean anomaly. 3935, and the events that occurred in the town and the building was heavily guarded when not in use by the organization. The initial exploration attempt into SCP-3935 was conducted by a team of Foundation agents, shortly after members of the contracting team were lost. There was a slight hope they could be recovered, and the effort was dubbed a search and rescue mission. Three agents, Ellis, Porter, and Haskell, were tasked with entering SCP-3935, all equipped with recording equipment and a shoulder-mounted lamp system. They entered a cramped, narrow space beyond the archway, where the subterranean stone walls got tighter and tighter, and the air felt stuffy and uneasy. Wait, why does that dog look familiar? Images resembling a child's drawings were carved into the rock. As the teams continued to push through the rock tunnel, they found it difficult to breathe. The walls were getting narrower, too close for comfort. Suddenly, Porter's voice cut out, and his camera feed went black. When it came back, it appeared to be looking up at two sources of light, most likely the other two agents' lamps, as Porter fell from a great distance. His screaming was heard on both the cameras and by the other agents, but they couldn't figure out where he was. Ellis and Haskell began to panic, moving faster why do you and continue? attempting- Okay, if one of your teammates disappear, why do you continue to go on with the mission when it's deemed like- which is now a hazard to all of you? ...to struggle forward. The rock tunnel was so tight, so constraining, that they were unable to move more than a few steps in a second. After a short period of time, both men fell forward into a larger open space. As they searched for Porter, who wasn't behind them, they came to the conclusion that he must have fallen into a ravine or slipped beneath the rocks. There was no other explanation for how he disappeared so suddenly, but their talk was cut short when they realized what was in front of them. They hadn't noticed it at first, but when they turned their lamps forward, they noticed Another. a gigantic structure, seemingly carved out of stone. It resembled Salvation High School almost perfectly. Huh. The main entrance was visible, and the windows too. A stone replica of the school, hidden in this massive underground area. The agents couldn't believe it. There was a thick layer of fog in front of them, but they could make out a narrow stone bridge that extended across a large chasm leading to the stone replica of the school. As they examined further, they noticed that underneath the school was another model of the school, and under that what one was another. It went on indefinitely, extending was it deeper endless? and deeper into the ground, in the direction- It reminds me of the first vi backroom video I reacted on this channel, where you, you have to go watch that video to truly understand what I'm about to say, but the camera guy, I forgot his name, got to a certain point where he saw like a leap leap into another uh, room and as soon as he got to the edge you could see see layer levels and levels and levels of, of the same door elsewhere just looking into it was like an open space like a like a like a ravine like spot like spot opening and <laughs> that's what the, that's what this is reminding me of that video and that all things in salvation seem to go down on the other side of the bridge, hanging mid-air, were nine female entities, their faces obscured by long white hair. The two agents stood still in fear. After a short time, the figures appeared ten meters backwards, and then another ten, and then they appeared right in front of the door of the stone school structure. Slowly, they lifted their heads, revealing their featureless faces to the agents, who recoiled in fear. After that, they disappeared. The two agents debated going back for reinforcements, but they pushed onward after hearing the sudden sound of many voices speaking in hushed tones in the distance. It could have been the lost contractors, or their lost man, Porter, 
They entered the stone school and began searching. Seems like a luring Inside, tactic. they couldn't make heads or tails of the architecture. As they ran down the hallways, following the sound of the voices, they noticed that the halls seemed to stretch on forever. But they didn't seem to notice the watching, featureless faces who observed the agents from the window panes in the doorways. As the agents came to the auditorium doorway, Agent Haskell let out a scream, and his voice recorder disconnected. At this point, what occurred became nearly impossible to make out on the Foundation's recording. Did Ellis the still stay alive? Louder. Haskell's camera shifted perspective to the floor. Nine female entities appeared around Agent Ellis, contorting their bodies into impossible positions. Haskell ran, but the entities pursued him. He screamed for help. Eventually, the figures hung in the air, unmoving. Haskell slowed down too and slowly turned around, coming face to face with the small black humanoid entity sitting upside down on the ceiling of the hallway. It whispered one word, hello. The feed cut out to the choppy sounds of audio distortion. A snapping noise was heard, and then silence. And then all three agents' feeds returned. For the duration of the exploration recording, Haskell, Ellis, and Porter lost their minds in the depths of SCP-3935. In between periods of silence, they laughed, screamed, and shouted incoherently, rambling on about how dark it is and how they can't go down any further, below, where it goes on forever, where they can be part of the Nine, be a part of salvation, where they can fall I am forever. very confused right After now. that, silence. The feed was cut out completely, and neither the trio nor the contractors were ever recovered. After this failed horrifying exploration attempt, more anomalous activity occurred in the town during the Foundation's occupation. Sightings of the nine faceless entities in the streets and the trees. An agent who saw the black figure constantly in his peripheral vision. Sounds coming from a grove of trees near the school, which led to a cabin and nine corpses of former Salvation High School students in the backyard. But before they could investigate, the female entities appeared once more, and they were unable to locate the grove again. The Foundation's huh. investigation of Salvation continued through the decades, interviewing former staff members of the school and residents. They were trying to piece together any semblance of a coherent story, to find a way to connect all these dissonant elements into something understandable. The black figure, the corpses, the buried secrets, and the nine, and nine, nine girls. Entities. How did it all connect to the school? In 2002, a Foundation agent interviewed Mrs. Fletcher, an English teacher at Salvation High School during the period of anomalous activity in 1976. The interview started out ordinarily enough. Fletcher, in her old age, couldn't remember much. She remembered the town was quiet, with a tight-knit community. They didn't even need a police force because there was so little crime. She remembered students would go into the woods and chase ghosts, or claim they saw things, but it was never anything too strange. But as Fletcher continued to talk, she let her mind wander more and more. She recounted how there was a disappearance at the high school, a girl who was last seen by the school's pool. The town assumed she ran away. After all, there were some individuals who held strong opinions in salvation. The kind of opinions that didn't sit right with some of the younger residents. Mm. The church was important in salvation. Nearly everyone went. Fletcher opened up some more. There was a scandal, she recalled. A teenage girl on the school cheer team who ended up pregnant out of wedlock. She couldn't recall her name or what she looked like, but she remembered the town's inner circle was in an uproar about it. She didn't want them to know. She didn't want anyone to know. It was a secret mm. she could barely keep from spreading. It must have been destroying her, Fletcher explained. She couldn't remember much about the girl, but she did remember that the girl would always say hello to her too many times, in fact. Eventually, the girl was found hanging in the woods right outside of a log cabin. They found a note in her hand, which contained a drawing of a building that resembled the high school, and on its back, the repetition of the same word over and over again. But Fletcher couldn't recall what the word was. The Foundation agent was about to close the interview out, but he had one last thing to ask. He produced a picture of the unidentified nine female figures that were haunting the town and showed it to Fletcher. She became noticeably pale and short of breath. Do you know anything about this, Mrs. Fletcher? The agent said. Please, I want to get some noses. And examined the image as best as she could, her hand shaking. I, uh, yes, I do. Those are um, ah, the, the cheerleaders. They were, uh, well... Let me think. There were ten of them, though, I think. Unless something happened to one of them, there were definitely ten. 
The Foundation didn't have to ask what happened to the 10th. Now go check out SCP-1337 The Hitchhiker. <laughs> Revenge of D-Class Ghosts SCP-49. Okay, that result very confusing and very lost. <laughs> that was probably one of the most confusing SCPs I've ever heard in my life. And I've heard some very strange ones, so that's really saying something. Um, <laughs> I don't really know how to end this video with that confusing explanation of this SCP. So I'm just going to end it right now and say, hopefully you guys enjoyed today's React video. Please like and subscribe and all that stuff, guys. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.